Daniel Katsi it's a pleasure. Yeah, thank, thanks for having me. You, you've just been releasing a, a crazy record, Will the Guns Come Out? Will the Guns Come Out? And um, when your record company gave me the record, they had the smile like that and they said, you, you really gonna dig that music? And it turned my life into a rock and roll life, listening to you for a few weeks. Is it something you, you know, you've been doing a record that could turn people's life into rock life? You know, I mean, I didn't really um, intend on anything except for recording a bunch of songs and, and giving them away. Um, you know, how it all started is, is uh, I, I was recording music um, just to do it as a hobby, something that I could get away from work. You know, you could do it on the weekend or do it at nights or whatever. And um, I did that, and that turned into um, playing some shows. Um, I started playing shows in San Francisco where I was from, um, or where I am from, and I don't live there anymore, but I was playing shows in San Francisco quite a bit, and it was kind of at that time when, um, you know, the label I'm signed to in America picked up the record, and then I started kind of touring, and I really, really got into playing shows and, and touring and doing all that. Um, since then, it's it, it's kind of like allowed us to come all over the world and stuff, and, and travel out here, and you know because is doing the record out out in France, and, and they're a great label to be a part of because you know they're very supportive of art and and um, you know everything outside of just music alone. They they really kind of like um, I guess nurture that side of it. So it, it's good, and and I'm I'm glad people are um, you know I felt like uh, I wanted to you know make make minimal like simple rock and roll music that you know meant something to me and the fact that like you know other people can appreciate it then uh, it makes me happy you know there's a lot of description to your work um rockabilly garage blues do you agree with all of this um yeah i mean i guess i can uh, agree with it because these are all like my separate influences you know and these are all all this type of music is uh is something that um really inspires me and 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 and, and I take a little from each kind of thing that I enjoy and I apply it to what I make, you know? I will add something. I'll say your music is a straight to the point music for the lyrics, for the melodies, for the riff guitars, for the sound. Yeah. It's straight to the point. There's no, no bullshit. You, you get straight to the point. Well, thanks. I mean, I, you know, that's the kind of um, thing I try to strive to do. I don't really like spending too much time. And, and for me, the type of songs that I listen to just like are in and out, you know? Um, I think that's why, like, you know, I, I like, um, like, I, I like the values and, and the uh, philosophies behind, like, punk music and punk aesthetic. Like, people just, like, it's, like, quick. Like, a Ramon song is, like, you know, two minutes long. Like, a Misfits track is, like, one minute and 30 seconds or whatever. Like, I remember, like, someone was saying that, like, a complete Ramon's uh, set was 17 minutes or something. That's, like, that, yeah. I, it's like f pretty sick like that you could just do that you know you just go in play your shit and then walk off stage it's fine um, I sort of feel that way with my music too like oftentimes um, you know we're asked to play like okay hey play an hour or whatever but then like we end up playing the set too fast and we're walking off at like 45 minutes you know and, and that just happens and a lot of times we're spontaneous on the fly that's why I like playing with just as a two-piece because you can just you know, my drummer and I have been playing together for so long that I can just kind of like throw a new song, be spontaneous, change it up, change the set in the middle of the set. People are talking blues when they listen to your music. Uh -huh. um, there's a way you record that is very raw, like the Delta Blues used to record. Or I'm thinking Robert Johnson sometimes oh, yeah. listening to your music. Um, did you take care a lot of recording in a very raw way that could be um, when you're rehearsing with you? It's funny because I think uh, the the way that the record sounds was purely based on the fact that. Um, we didn't have like the greatest equipment. I recorded it in a in like a bedroom studio. Um, I recorded everything really fast. Like, go in, press record, 
put a microphone wherever. We didn't. We we're kind of experimenting with it. Um, one of my good friends, Mark Bianchi, he he's the one who recorded the record. Um, we would just. We didn't really know. You know, we knew kind of what we're doing, but like not like all the proper, legit like studio ways. So um, for us it, and for myself, I think it was just like being comfortable with like, okay, that's that's the sound. Like that's gonna be it. Like it's gonna just sound like that. Hey, loved one, can't talk to me that way. Oh, loved one, don't talk to me that way. Cause if you wanna fight, go ahead, but it ain't gonna be me tonight. Oh, loved one. It's, you have a very heavy sound on your guitar. You, you, yeah, you prepared your sound so you could feel good on your reef and then it was off, you, you were going. Yeah, I mean, a lot of that stuff was um, recorded and written um, on the spot, kind of. Uh, there's, there's some times where I would write the lyrics elsewhere and then um, record the music, like, or write the music kind of like as I'm recording it or whatever. Um, that happened quite a bit. Also happened the opposite, like build, destroy, rebuild. I m made the music first, and then I didn't know what the lyrics were going to be except for the chorus. And so um, I just told my friend to press record, and then I'll just I was like, oh, I'll make up the lyrics, like whatever. I'll just like improvise it, and make it up, like while we record. And it was like that happened a few times because like when I started having to play the songs live. Um, I realized that I didn't know the lyrics to my own songs, you know, like, so I was like, oh shit, I gotta like, you know, relearn my own music, you know. The um, Dead Wrong song mm -hmm. is uh, produced in a different way, very clever way, I think, with oh, little thanks. guitar and uh, the groove. Maybe it's your San Francisco ADN coming back. Yeah, from the... yeah I, I, for me, it's like, you know, I didn't want to be confined to one specific sound or, uh, because I'm not, I, uh, personally, I'm like influenced by tons of things, like and and the kind of music that I listen to um, outside of like just garage stuff and like things like that um, are really varied, you know. And I wanted to show that, like you know, I appreciate and make all types of music as well, um, you know. But I had to try to figure out a way that it could be cohesive in a sense. Um, I think like thematically and subject matter wise, there's there's a few things that kind of tie it together. But you know, throwing like a a random like folk country almost song on the record. I it, it felt like it was going to be a good idea. It is, it turned out to be a very good idea. We have to end up saying that the melodies are really uh, out of time. Those songs could be written a few years ago or maybe uh, Fury is coming in. Um, and I have to say also the lyrics are really... Love is is all about, I think, in your, your music relations. with the, There's a lot of that, no? Yeah. Um, I guess, I, I guess it, it, you know, my lyrics are written about, you know, um, you know, things that have happened to me personally, um, things that have happened to really close friends of mine, um, you know, personal stories, like real real shit that like people deal with, like, you know, and it, I, I, you know, I, I felt like, you know, there's, there's times where I want to just write irreverent things that don't mean anything to anybody, but like, I don't know, like at the end of the day, sometimes I feel like if I'm going to make music, it has to like personally, you know, be um, of somewhat like therapy for myself, you know? Because um, that's why I'm making it, you know, music is very cathartic and, and playing it live is very, like, therapeutic in a way, you know. There's a last question, there's a, a hype around you, like there has been a hype with the Black Keys, with the White Stripes, with bands that make it raw, simple, like if the industry needed someone that makes it simple once in a while, um, yeah. how do you, you feel like that? You, um, you know, the, the, those bands are like, um, both great bands and, you know, uh, respect them quite a bit. Um, I feel like, uh, you know, e each each one has their own uh, sound and, and place and I, I feel like with myself I, I think, um, you know, just simplicity is something that 
I just it, it just makes sense to me like uh, the kind of music that I I want to make and you know is, is based on what I can play also you know I, I think about that too like I don't really know how to play every instrument that well but I can play a few of them good enough to like make a song out of it so like you, you know I never wanted to make something that doesn't feel natural so therefore the music that I record is is the most natural feeling music that I could possibly make you know Aniel Katib, I have to say for last thing that the videos are really good. Also, Dead Wrong, Loved One, You Ask a You. Loved One, what did you record that? Was it in a. Um, loved it One? Coney yeah, it is Coney Island yeah, actually. He's playing uh, Shoot the Freak. Yeah. Island, yeah? yeah, 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 Shoot the Freak. Shoot the freak. That, good. Uh, that was fucking crazy. Yeah. The freak I definitely. Looks scared. The, fr the Freak was getting shot for sure. <laughs> sure. The videos are really great. And uh, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. Yeah, yeah, pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.